Hello fellow podcasters, today I've got Rule of Wolves by your one and only Play Bardugo. And let's get straight into it. So this time I won't spend that long on the summary because the book's like 600 pages long and I can't explain 600 pages of plot without it being dragging on and boring. So I'll give you guys a really brief summary and then give you guys my takes and my analysis. Again, spoiler full as usual. Let's get straight into it. So summary, basically we continue right off from uh, the first book, King of Scars, which I reviewed like... A year, two years ago almost now? I don't know, but I rediscovered the series, I picked it back up. I kind of read the Lady Bardugo books in a weird order, because I read King of Scars first, then I read the Shadow and Bone trilogy, and then I read Wolf, Rule of Wolves. So it's been a weird and strange journey in the Grishaverse for me, but I stay, I've enjoyed it quite a lot. So we pick up right after where a previous book end, end, ended off with Zoya having the powers of a dragon and Nikolai's like demon sickness thing getting completely uncontrollable and even worse than before. Now, we are in this, and we're in the situation where Fijarda, I don't know if I'm saying that right, Firda, Fijarda, Fijarda is invading from this side, and the Shu all that we were trying to ally with is kind of backstabbing us because the queen is kind of an unreal bad guy, so we've got a pretty bad situation. Fijarda has a much more powerful military than us, while, and we can't expect any help from our allies. And they have a bunch of drugs that, that can, they can use against Grisha to get them addicted and to kind of poison them almost and poison their minds and control them. Not only that, their weapons again are much better than ours and they've spent a lot more time on their military. And hence, Ravka is in danger. And this is, this and this story is told through several different narratives. We obviously got Nikolai, the king, the boy king or, you know, the, the scar, the king of scars now, as we call him, right? Uh, he's still in the lead. He's still trying to take control and protect his homeland. And we've got Zoya, um, Nikolai's first general, um, Nikolai's general, you know, general of the second army, you know, with her pat, with her storm powers newly amplified due to the fact that, you know, she has a dragon within her, right? And we've got the, and, and also we've got Nina, who is working as a spy within, uh, with a Fajarda and also falling in love at the same time. No spoilers for that particular part. And then there's the perspective of the Darkling who is doing well, question mark. Uh, basically in the middle of the book, the Darkling escapes. Haha, <laughs> what a big surprise. We totally didn't see that coming, but he seems to be going on a little bit of a redemption arc. And we see a little bit through his perspective as a more of, the, of a more human perspective, right? Because in Shadow and Bone, he wasn't really a character you could emphasize with. But in this one, you know, you can emphasize a little bit more, I would say, because we spent a little longer in his perspective, in his kind of thoughts, right? So we got effectively four different main characters, a kind of, and perspectives that, that is weaved throughout the book. And we see the story in these like cut off bits of their perspective kind of wind together to form a narrative. And it's tough writing like that and big props to labor to go for doing that. Um, yeah, and that's that. And so basically this book entails Ravka's final stand against Fajarda in the face of adversity and trying to survive. And that's going to be my summary because I don't want to spend 15 minutes explaining the entire plot of this book. Now I'll just move into my analysis. So main point, I love how Leigh Bardugo does female characters, making them strong, but still flawed and scarred, hurt, but they're like, so there's like, they're smart, they're strong, they're real characters, they feel like real people. Like they have flaws, of course, and they have their own scars, but they're still powerful, they're still strong. And if, and I feel like this is just like, kind of like that having female characters done right, you know, and it's kind of hard to see that sometimes in modern media where we end up having these characters that are very flat, or have these characters that basically have no faults. But in this case, we've got these amazing characters that have faults, that have traumatic backstories and have have scars within their hearts that are still powerful and still, still characters, right? And I thought that was done really, really well. And I like how she doesn't try to push down male characters in order to make the female characters shine. Instead, she allows them to complement each other, which, you know, should be common sense and we should all be doing that, but vice versa, people don't do that a lot of times in books and modern media. So 
I really, really enjoyed that part. Her pacing, on the other hand, I can't compliment as much because it was kind of bad. Like, I was slightly bored for around half of the book. Not necessarily like the first half or the second half, but like, but like in percentage wise, for 50% of my reading experience, I was, I was slightly bored. Um, and this is because it's a long book, man. It's 600, it's 600 pages long. It's got a lot of subplots and like, you know, getting the titanium for the missiles. Like there's a lot of little subplots that happen that's kind of happening. And again, it's a big chonky of a story, right? There's four perspectives and all four of their stories matter very much. Of course, Nikolai and Zoya's stories are more interlinked, so it's easier to follow as a narrative. But Nina and the Darklings, that's completely separated. So again, it's a little hard to follow sometimes. And the pacing suffers because of it. And also, again, it's a long book and a lot of things happen throughout it, so it's a little hard to keep pace with what's going on. Um, but I was, again, invested enough in the characters and what would happen to them and what would happen to Ravka as a whole uh, to keep keep going. So, so again, the pacing wasn't like a detrimental factor that made me, you know, put down the book or anything. But again, it was there and it was frustrating. And also the fact that, you know, a lot of really bad things happened to the characters for like 75% of the book. So it was tough as a reader, like seeing them suffer for like the entirety of the book, you know. And, and although there was some lighter moments, it was obviously kind of heavy. And it felt, it was, yeah, it was just a really heavy read for a, of a large majority of the book. And I know it's meant to be like that, and it's probably pretty much intended. However, again, that kind of drags down the reading experience a little bit, because I prefer pure escapism. What I got was angsty politics, um, which is not a bad thing. It's just something that I perceived while reading. Uh, the character development, I thought, was done quite well. We go, we see, it makes sense, right? Like, at the end of the book, we see the characters and what they've become. Like, we can see very obviously where that came from. We get an explanation for that, and it's very well built up for each character throughout the book. Uh, the only thing that felt a little bit um, out of, not out of place, uh, a little bit rushed was perhaps Nina's arc, and also, um, I don't, and her girlfriend's arc? I don't know what to call her girlfriend. I'll just call her Hanne. That's her name. I don't know how to say it properly. Hanne, Hanne, whatever. Uh, their arc was, I feel like Leigh Bardugo, again, I told you she was suffering with pacing. So I felt like she just didn't have enough space to have enough story, enough narrative for these two. I know they have plenty of space in the book and I know that, but I just felt like there could have been a little bit more obvious lines or arcs or like some more subtle nuances of what was going on. Um, but again, I thought I thought it was well done overall. So I it, it again all the things that I'm talking about, all the problems I'm talking about, I'm nitpicking. It's not like a problem problem. It's more like eh, you know, it, it could have been done a little better, and I it was noticeable. So yeah, so the character development again overall I thought it was done very well. It's a little obvious. It's very direct. We kind of get a, a lot of it through like internal dialogue and monologues. And you know the characters talking through each other, so it's not exactly the most subtle thing in the world. But hey, I don't expect a Jane Austen book every time I read something, okay? And also, Jane Austen is you know is great, is master characterization, but it's hard to read, right? So I, I thought it was good because you know the uh, it's a YA fantasy book, so it's put a lot more emphasis on the plot. And obviously, although it is character led, we don't need to have a masterpiece of character building every time we read a book. So I thought it was good. Uh, obvious, direct, that means it's easy to understand, right? Everything's a double-edged knife. Uh, and also, the, again, I did say the pacing did suffer, but the last hundred pages or so, that was when everything that the rest of the book built up kind of boom exploded, right? And all the satisfying things happened all at the same time for a hundred pages. So it was like, it was like, you know, it was kind of a drag to get through the first like three, four hundred pages and then you get to the last bit. And it's just an adrenaline rush all the way through. It was a great payoff. I think it worked really well in her favor. And I can see that, you know, her, her, like her slower build up for the first, you know, 80%, 75% of the book, 70% of the book was quite intentional because, you know, it really builds up and explodes in the end, which I really, really enjoyed. And I can say that that is very, very well done. Uh, Overall, the main problem that I have with this writing is that it feels very polished, which also means that it feels very, uh, it has no distinct voice, uh, it has no distinct narrative voice. But again, like 
that's not like a hundred percent necessary component. That's like a stylistic choice, right? We can't all be Terry Pratchett. We can't all be Neil Gaiman. We can't all have a distinct narrative voice. And I think Leigh Bardugo has has her her style of prose figured out very well, where it's very polished, it's very easy to read, and it doesn't necessarily need to have an extra flair, right? And and I, from what I know, Shadow and Bone was her debut novel, so I'm sure she'll become a better writer as she keeps writing. And yeah, and say like, to, so like what I'm saying is that there's nothing, like I wouldn't be able to know that this was a Lay Bardugo book without any context with reading it, right? It's not, there's nothing that makes her iconic. But at the same time, I think she's a very, very good writer. She's very talented. This is built up really well pay, uh, with good characters and the story was done very well. So I still enjoyed it. And again, this is all of what I said is my opinion. I liked the book quite a lot. Um, it, again, it's not like the polished feel of it, nor the pacing was absolutely detrimental and ruined my experience. Like some books, uh, some some books, you know, eh, pacing ruins the experience type of. You know, you know, I'm not I'm not pointing any fingers, but yeah. So it wasn't like that. It was anything like that. It was quite an enjoyable read. Uh, yeah, and I think that is about it. That is about it. So I give this a rating around a seven out of ten. Really, really good overall. I just wish there was a little bit of, there was some flaws with it, and I think I've talked enough about that. So yeah, I would recommend this book. I would recommend any Lee Bardugo book. It's a great read and a nice little jump into this political, magical, magical, and Grisha wouldn't like that word, magical world, politics, wars, kings, queens, and a whole bunch of action and fighting, and romance, of course. Like always, your plot quest for Aaron the Plot Quest. Great book, everyone. I would recommend everyone this, everyone this, yeah.